and the presence of the Lord. Come on, make some noise. Stand on your feet and clap your hands and shout, Lord, I need the Holy Ghost. We don't need tradition. We need the power of God. We don't need man's formula. We need our faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Let's all clap our hands and give the Lord great praise and glory in the house of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Give them a great hand to them and the band as they have blessed us today. Amen. Now let me tell you something at Jesus' is Lord Church. You're not going to get three points in a poem. That's not going to change your life. The power of God is going to change your life. 
And today most churches are 60 minutes and we wonder why the people have very little knowledge of the word of God. But I'm so glad today that the principles of giving and honor of God were taught by Pastor Anthony. Can you say amen? I'm so glad that we worship together for over 40 minutes. Are you excited about Jesus? I, me and my wife, we pastor the greatest church in the world. Jesus is Lord Church, and we're so glad that all of you are here today, whether you're in the sanctuary or watching online, we love you. God bless each and every one of you. Pick up your Bible today, and let's go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 43. If we could just stand for a few moments for the reading of the Word of God, today is a great day of celebration. Today, I'm going to share with you some things concerning the vision that God has placed upon me and my wife's life. The vision today is growing, it's expanding, and it's multiplying. The vision began in my parents' life. God gave them a vision over 40 years ago to start this ministry. And the vision is growing, and it's multiplying. And the kingdom of God is advancing. Can you say amen? If you have your Bible, I'm reading from the Message Bible. It says, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert and be present. For I am about to do something brand new. Tell somebody God's up to something new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? He said, forget about what happened in the past. You may be seated. Stop going over old history. Be alert and be present. I'm about to do something brand new. How many of you believe God's going to do something brand new in you? So many times we want God to do something for us, but God wants to first do something in us. Can you say amen? Many times God will delay what you've planned to accomplish his purpose and plan for your life. Now today, there may be some people that get mad, but others are going to get glad. Because I'm going to share some things that God has placed upon my heart for this year that we're in. Many people made New Year's resolutions, but resolutions do not work. But when you have a vision from God, what God has spoken to your spirit, it shall come to pass. How many of you are holding on to some promises from God? How many of you had a vision, have a vision for your life? You have a vision for your life. Can I see your hand? Well, this is Vision Sunday, and I want to challenge you today to enlarge your vision. When I was in prayer yesterday, the Lord said, I'm going to double the vision of this house, and I'm going to double the vision of the people of God and the vision and the dreams and the desires that I have for them. Amen. How many of you want God's plan to come to pass? How many of you know God's plan will always prosper? The Lord's plan, the Bible says, will prevail. So today I'm going to be talking about vision. Everybody say vision. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 and verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Are you with me? Where there is no vision, say that together, where there is no vision, Say, when I have no vision, I will perish. But the Bible says, but he that keepeth the law, Proverbs 29, 18, happy is he. That word perish means, in the Hebrew, it means there are no boundaries or the people, the Bible says, cast off restraint. It means that there is no direction or focus when you have no vision. How many of you know a lot of people, they have no direction and they have no focus for their life? Maybe I'm, a, I'm describing you right now. You have no real focus and no plan for your life. So what is vision? Vision in the Hebrew means a sight, a, mentality, a mentally, a dream, a revelation, an oracle, or from the root, kazor, to gaze at, mentally to perceive. This is what it means to contemplate with pleasure. To have a vision of, behold, to look, prophesy, provide. Vision, the act or power of seeing. Say that together. Vision is the act or power. Come on, wake up, say vision is the act or power of seeing. Something supposedly seen in a dream. A mental image. The ability to foresee or perceive. Something not actually visible. Something seen as through mental acuteness. So we could say that vision today, we can describe vision as a mental picture of our future that is absolutely forceful enough to mold my present. You need to understand today that your life is larger than what you've been experiencing. That your life is larger than what you've been living. If you've got a vision for your life, can I see your hand? Give the Lord a shout of praise if you have vision. 
Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Paul said, he said this in 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 13. He said this in the Message Bible, I want you to enter into this wide, open, spacious life. Say, God has a wide, open, spacious life for me. See, the smallness, Paul said, you feel comes from within you. You, 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 you're not meant to live it, but you're living it in a small way. Your lives aren't small. But Paul said you're living your life in a small way. I want to know today how many of you in this room, you have a promise that you've been holding on to in your heart, a dream, a vision. Come on, somebody. Let me see your hand today. You need to understand that God did not create you to live an average, mediocre life. God has created you to live an extraordinary life. He said, I've come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. God does not want you to live some little, small life. God wants you to live an abundant life. Can you say amen? I love what 2 Samuel 7, 3 says. He says, God, go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Tell somebody, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Encourage somebody today with your words. Say, do all that's in your heart, for the Lord is with you. See, if you can accomplish your dream in your own strength, your own talent, your own resources, then your dreams are too small. If your dreams don't involve other people, your dreams are too small. If the vision that God has given you, you can achieve it and accomplish it by yourself, that is not a vision from God. Can you say amen? Tell somebody, enlarge your vision. See, your destiny is too great to live your life in a small way. Your assignment is too important to have little goals and little dreams and little plans. Come on, somebody. You've got to keep the vision and the dream that God has given you every day in front of you. How many of you believe God called you to live a blessed life? Can you start by smiling today? How many of you are blessed today? Your sins have been forgiven. You're highly favored of the living God. Give the Lord a mighty praise in the house of God. You've got to protect your vision. If your vision is limited, your life will be limited. If your vision is limited, your life will be limited. Don't expect people to celebrate your vision. They don't have a vision or a dream themselves. Why would they celebrate yours? Seven times in the scripture, God asks, what do you see? Seven times, what do you see? What do you see for your life? What do you see in the future? What do you see for 2022? How many of you believe God has amazing things for you in 2022? Let me see your hand. If you're a part of this church, God has amazing things for you. If you're connected to us by online, part of our e-church, God has amazing things for you. God has amazing things for your family. Can you say amen? How many of you have faith and great expectation that the greatest days are ahead of you? How many of you are ready to make history with your life this year? How many of you are bored with your life? I want to challenge you today. Let God give you a vision for your life. You should not be living some boring life as a Christian. This is an exciting journey with God. Can you say amen? Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you need to simply begin today by saying, God, give me a vision for my life. Seven times in the scripture, God says, what do you see? What do you see for your life? What do you see over the next 10 months? What do you believe in God to do in your life? What do you believe in him to do in your family? What are you expecting in the financial arena of your life? Our imagination is so powerful. Our imagination, the Bible talks about, is an incredibly powerful thing. In fact, in Genesis 11 and 6, it says nothing they imagined was impossible to them. Say that together. Nothing they imagined was impossible to them. I want to challenge you today, if you can see it through the eyes of faith, God can do it. If you have a vision, God will bring it to pass. If you can see the invisible, you can possess the impossible. Do not be discouraged by what's going on around your life. Don't be discouraged and depressed by what you're facing today. I want to encourage you today that what you're going through is only temporary. I'm going to tell every one of you here today in this place that what you're facing is not permanent. It is only temporary, and it is subject to change. Give God praise in the house of God. 
That's pitiful and pathetic. I said, give the creator of heaven and earth the praise he deserves. Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. Well, that season's changing. What you're going through and what you're walking through is only temporary. The only thing that is eternal is God's word in my life. Feelings come and feelings go. Can you say amen? Seasons change. People come into our life and people leave our lives. But God is with us through the thick and thin. You may have gone through a long, painful night, season of your life. But the Bible says and gives us good news today. How many of you want some good news today? That weeping endures for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Somebody shout, joy comes in the morning. This is not a defeated day. This is a victory day. This is not a discouraging day. This is a day that God is increasing and challenging all of us to expand our vision. God is doing something brand new in you. Can you shout somebody? When you get a vision, everything on the outside has to comply what God spoke on the inside of your heart. Revelation molds our present and transforms our future. A vision is a dream come true. There is always a prepared place, the Bible teaches, for a prepared people. You need to understand that this is the year that God is moving you to a place called promise. You are going to see promises and dreams and manifestations of God's word. Things that God spoke over your life years ago. They're coming to pass for you this year. Where there is no vision, though, people, the Bible says, they perish. Some of you need to change your mindset. Some of you need to change your confession. Some of you need to change your behavior. Some of you need to make changes to your lifestyle. Some of you have mindsets and paradigms that have to change. A stronghold is a mindset that is resistant to change. Somebody said, I'm always tormented in my mind. That's because you don't renew your mind. You're battling depression daily because you're more in the feeling realm and the emotional realm than you are in the Word of God and in the supernatural, the spiritual realm. Vic there is no victory in the natural, but there is always victory in the midst of conflict in the spirit dimension. Somebody shout hallelujah. But you need to understand you are the hardest thing to change. God can change your situation just like that. God can heal you of cancer just like that. But a mindset, oh my God, a mindset many times is, is very hard for God to change because we are set in our ways. But God wants to mold us into his image, into what he has called and created us to be. Everybody shout, God, give me a vision in a greater capacity today in Jesus' name. Now shout if you are excited about the next level of your life. Lay your hands on your mind. Say, God, change my mind. Change my mindset and give me a new paradigm. Shout the victory, somebody. Let me tell you something today. You teach what you know, but you impart and transfer who you are. Impartation is what God has done on the inside of you. You cannot impart what you don't have. I see preachers trying to mimic other preachers. You cannot impart what you don't have. You cannot deposit and transfer what you've not received. You can teach but what you know, but you can only impart what God has done in you. How many of you want a greater vision for your life this year? A greater vision for your finances? Oh my God, the days of, of going to jobs you hate are over. God is going to raise up people that will go from employer to employee, employee to employer. Shout somebody. Once someone asked Helen Keller a question, what could possibly be worse than blindness? She responded to have sight but no vision. She said the only thing that is worth, worse than blindness is to have sight but have no vision. I know a lot of Christians like this. Thank God nobody here today. They have sight, but they have no vision. What is vision? Vision is the ability to see further than your natural eyes can see. Vision is the ability to see further than your natural eyes have the ability to look. Can you say amen? You need to get a new, new vision for your life. Can you say amen? You'll need a new strategy to see visions and dreams come to pass. 
What worked in the past will not work this year. Can you say amen? The way God blessed you as a resource last year will not sustain you and bless you and promote you this year. Sometimes God will allow a resource to dry up so that you can get your faith back in him as your focus, as your ultimate source of supply. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that Elijah went to a brook called Cherith, but after a while the brook dried up, but God had another plan of provision for his life. He sent him to a woman of Zarephath, and the Bible says that woman sustained the prophet of God through a famine with the last loaf of bread. Can you say amen? So just like when it looks like one door closes, it takes one door to close for God to open ten more doors of favor and effectiveness in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not preaching to everybody. I could already tell that. I'm telling today, I'm preaching today and I'm declaring and I'm telling you today that God has a greater plan for your life than what you've planned for. Somebody shout hallelujah. Habakkuk said this, and I love this. How many of you love this word today? How many of you are receiving it in your spirit, not in your mind? I'm going to say it again. 60-minute church will not change your life. 45 minutes of music and 10 minutes of preaching will not help you. We need to put a priority on the word of God and the moving of the Holy Ghost in the modern church. Can you say amen? Habakkuk said this, and this was the foundational scripture, mom, of the church. Way back when you guys started here on the property in the little house. Back then, Gina, you were a little girl, a teenager. Gina Schultz. Teenagers, Lori, singing for God. Way back then in the little house, Catherine, God deposited and dropped a vision in my father and mother's heart. Over 40 years ago, the vision of God was birthed. But the vision of God is growing. Can you say amen? Some of you are discouraged because somebody walked out of your life. If they walked out of your life, they're not a part of your future. I said if they, God did you a favor, he delivered you. Some of you need to ask God to deliver you from some people. But this was the word that God gave my mother and father over 40 years ago. And it was this in Habakkuk 2. And I read it today in the Message Bible and it literally blew my mind. It says this in Habakkuk 2, verse 2 and 3 of the Message Bible. And then God answered, write the vision, write this, write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. For the vision, the vision, everybody shout, the vision. The message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It, it, aches for, it aches for the coming. It can hardly wait, and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on the way. I wish somebody would shout, it's on the way. My dream is on the way. The manifestation of my prophecy is on the way. My healing is on the way. My financial miracle is on the way. My breakthrough is on the way. Revival is on the way. The greatest awakening in all of human history is on the way. God is about to blow your mind. Shout somebody all over this tabernacle. The Bible says write the vision down you got to write it down. Somebody say, well, i got a great vision. you never written it, down, written it down. You don't have a great vision. There are four things or four steps in, the, in Habakkuk 2 that outlines how to fulfill our vision. Number one, write the vision. Say it together. Write the vision. Say it together. Write the vision. you got to write the vision. You must develop a statement of purpose that answers who am I, where am I, and why do I exist on this earth? What is your purpose for living? Without a plan, you will not prosper. Without a purpose, you will live an unfulfilled life. you got to write it down. Tell somebody, write the vision down. You know, I read this this morning that experts say writing your goals increase your probability of achieving them by 90%. The Word of God is preached. People don't take notes anymore. Why? There's no priority. There's no value on the Word of God. What you value, you pursue. What you hunger for, you chase after. Can you say amen? How many of you have a vision for your life, a vision for your family, a vision for business, a vision? Come on, somebody, let me see your hand. Every hand should be shooting up there in your living room. You should have a vision for your life. you got to write the vision. you got to make it plain. 
You got to write it down. Number two, you got to set goals. You got to clearly define your goals. Today, I'm going to clearly define the goals that God has given me, me and my wife, for 2022. We're going to challenge people today to stand with the vision of this church. If you're not a giver, you're not going to like this church. If, you're not a, if you don't like the sacrifice for the blessing and benefit of souls, you're not going to enjoy the vision of this church. That's why I said you'll either get mad or you'll get glad. You can work 20 jobs. If you don't do it God's way, you'll never prosper. Can you say amen? You can't rob from God and wonder why I'm not blessed. Wonder why I got no money at the end of the week. Wonder why I live from paycheck to paycheck, robbing from Peter to pay Paul. You need to understand God has given us a plan and a biblical outline, even biblical economics, how we can prosper in this life. But if you don't apply yourself, you will not prosper. If you don't take heed to the word of God that was even shared today when the tithe, the basic, entry-level Christianity from Pastor Anthony, it is impossible for you to be blessed if you are not simply honoring God with the little that he demands from you. But I love what he said, and he shared it with me yesterday. Everything we have came from God. We begin to prosper and we think it's us. But I love what Deuteronomy says. Don't forget, forget. Don't you remember, don't you forget to remember it is the Lord thy God that has given you the power to get wealth. Don't you think you could stand in your own strength? You know, the Bible says, take heed lest you fall. We understand today we are nothing without God. I can't preach without God. I can't shout without God. I can't do what God has called me to do without his hand upon my life. Tell somebody everything you have came from God. you got to set goals. What are your goals for this year? We've been meeting with people that oversee ministry, and tomorrow again we'll be doing the same. If you don't have a goal for your ministry, I can't use you. If you don't have a goal and if you're not supporting the vision, how can I count on you? Clearly define your goals and objective. Goals are bite-sized, little pieces of your vision. That can be attained daily. Number three, if you're going to see your vision come to pass. Now, those that have a vision are excited about this word. Those that just want to wander through life aimlessly like the children of Israel, they're not going to be excited. But those like Abraham, that God says, step outside the tent, look into the sky. As many of the stars are in the sky, that's the way I'm going to multiply and bless you. How many dreamers do I have today? How many visionaries do I have watching me today online? you got to clearly define your goals. I want to ask everybody today, this year, throughout the weeks of this, the year that we're in, what are your goals for this church? What is your personal vision for the ministry you oversee? You've got to clearly define your goals and objectives. Can you say amen? Number three, you've got to develop a team. You've got to develop and grow a team. I cannot do what God has called me to do without every one of you. Let me say that again. My wife's going to be touching on this in a few moments. We cannot achieve what God has called us to do on Long Island without people like you, those watching online, partners with this ministry, those like Aaron and her that uphold the arms of the servant of God, that we will prevail in the midst of the battle. Can you say amen? I want everybody to hear me today, whether you're new to this church, you've been here for years. It is impossible for any man of God to accomplish the vision that God has given him without support and partners. I cannot do what God has called me to do without people like you. And when the vision is taught, you will support. When the vision is caught, you will support. We don't have to beg you to give. We shouldn't have to tell you, I ask you every week, are you tithing? First of all, you, 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 don't, you don't have any revelation of the cross if you're not a giver. If you are not a giver, you're not going to be a very well good receiver. Can you say amen? Somebody shout hallelujah. It is so important. It is crucial that we understand. You cannot receive until you give. Can you say amen? We need to realize that we've got to develop a team, and that's why we have the dream team. And many people are on the dream team, and they've graduated from next steps. And in that time that we sat down over those four weeks, you understood the purpose, the vision, the mission of this church. Those of you that are new, we're going to be signing up people again as we approach the spring for next steps. Because everyone that is in this room should want to know the vision, the mission of this great church. Can you say amen?
The vision, the mission statement, a statement of faith. What do we believe? What do we stand for? What do we represent? What do we contend for? Can somebody shout hallelujah? But you need to develop a team. If you have a vision and your vision is from God, you will not accomplish it on your own. You have got to develop a team. A prophet of God by the name of Prophet Bill Norton came in and challenged all the leaders in a closed setting. He said, if you don't learn how to build a team, the future of this ministry is is at stake. Now I take that very seriously because this is the year that we are reap we are we are training people and we are preparing the next generation of ministry here at Jesus as Lord. Now every leader in this room should be shouting because that is your purpose for living to transfer legacy. Surround yourself with people who stir up the dream in you. Often people attempt to achieve their vision without help. If you, try to attempt, if you attempt to achieve your vision without help, all it's going to do is produce frustration. You cannot build a vision or a real dream from God without assistance. Somebody shout hallelujah. you got to watch who you surround yourself with. You got to surround yourself with people that believe in the dream and that want to help develop your team. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? Now I want you to, I want to give you a news flash. Not everybody's going to celebrate you in life. People that you thought would celebrate you will turn on you in a moment. People that you thought were for you, you'll find out are against you. But I love what John said. He said if they left us, they were never of us. It makes a difference who you associate with. It makes a difference who is in your circle of influence. Somebody talk back to me in this house. Some of you need to redefine your circle. I, I love what Brother Rick said yesterday. Rick, where are you? Back there. He said yesterday in the men's breakfast, some of you signed up and didn't show up. I don't know why. We had a great day of fellowship yesterday. It was a great time, and it really blessed my heart to hear what Rick shared in that men's breakfast. He said, before I came to church and came to Christ, I was in the wrong circle. But he said, now that I'm in church, I'm around the right people, and now I know I'm in the right circle. It makes a difference who you associate with. You associate with negative people, people that are always murmuring, blabbing, complaining, backbiting people. That spirit will affect your life. It makes a difference who you associate with. Elijah hang around with Elijah, and the Bible says he received a double portion. And if you study it out, Elisha performed twice as many miracles. Everybody shout double vision. He performed twice as many miracles of that of his mentor, Elijah. Can you say amen? Everybody say it makes a difference who I associate with. I don't know about you. Time is passing very quickly. And I don't got no time to waste on people that are not heading in the direction of God's destiny and purpose for my life. Not too long ago, I, there was somebody here. Actually, it was Kim Gambino back there. She said, there's certain people I can't hang around with anymore because they drain me. How many of you know there are people in our lives that drain us? People that try to zap the energy and the spiritual vitality from us. You need to surround yourself with people. I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me now. You need to surround yourself with people that believe in the dream and that know your vision and that are ready to run with it. Shout somebody. Elijah, the Bible says, imparted and released the mantle and Elisha was in the right place at the right time and the Bible says he received a double portion. Tell somebody it makes a difference who you hang out with. Joshua hung around with Moses. Are you listening to me? And Joshua was the one that went in to the promised land. Samson hung around compromisers and he missed out on his destiny because he hung around with the wrong people. Are you listening to me? You've got to hang around with people that look like where you want to go. you got to connect with people. You need to stay connected with people that will show you what a blessed life looks like. To live in victory in your mind. To live in victory in your finances. Somebody shout hallelujah. Who you associate with makes a difference in your life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? God didn't call you to walk around pecking like a chicken on the ground. God called you to soar up and mount up like an eagle. Somebody shout hallelujah. And you can't soar with eagles if you're always hanging around with chickens. 
And when a preacher and a man of God begins to challenge people like this, people either go with the flow or they resist it and get mad. But if you will receive the word of God, you will prosper. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. So what happened, Florine? Samson missed his destiny because instead of following the will of God for his life, he'd rather lay his head in the lap of Delilah. And the Bible says because he hung around with compromisers, he missed out on his destiny for his life. Are you ready? Watch this. What happened to Samson, Linda Lee? The Bible says that his eyes were gouged out because he hung around with the wrong people. Without eyes, you can't see. Without eyes, you can't live the life to the fullness. And some of you, you've lost your vision because you're connected to the wrong people. Lay your hands on your eyes. Say, God, open my eyes. My God, scales are falling off people's eyes today. I'm not going to have my eyes gouged out. I'm going to see what God put in my heart come to pass. I am not going to be the next statistic of another backslidden person, but I am going to rise up in this hour, and I'm going to see the dream, the vision, and the purpose of God come to pass. Some of you need to get around other dreamers. You need to get around people that have real vision. Someone said, what happened, Pastor? You, 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 you stepped away from me in relationship. No, God delivered me from you. There's a big difference. I do not associate with people that God is trying to deliver me from. Stop reconnecting with people. I don't hear anybody preaching back. Stop trying to reconnect with people that God delivered you from. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't care if it's a family member. I don't care if it's a friend on your job. I don't care if it's somebody you ride the bus with, somebody you ride in the HOV lane with. Stop, my God, staying connected with people that are not a part of your vision and the future that God has placed in your heart. Tell somebody, get around dreamers. Your vision, your dreams will be greatly impacted by those you choose to associate with. Don't allow people to talk you out of what God put in your heart. Over the years, you know how many people have tried to talk me out of what God put in my heart? Some of them are even well-meaning people. But they were being led by the devil to try to contradict what God spoke to my spirit. In the natural, they're good people, but spiritually a mess, a disaster headed for destruction. Where there is no vision, lift your hand, say where there's no vision. Say where there is no redemptive revelation of God, the people have no focus and are easily distracted, and the Bible says we'll perish. Number four, launch the vision. That's what we're doing this year. Everybody shall launch the vision. How many of you have a vision for your family? I'm going to keep asking the same questions till you get this. If I was to ask you, what is the vision? What is your purpose for living? Could you explain it to me in 30 seconds? If I was to sit down with people in this music ministry and ask you, what is the vision for your life? What is your vision for this ministry? What is the mission and the vision statement of this church? You should know it. Everybody in this room should know it. That's why we have next steps. So that you can learn the vision. Understand the vision. You cannot run with it until you first have read it. Write it down. Make it plain so those that read it can run with it. Then you got to launch it. Everybody shall launch. The Bible says in James 1.22 tells us to be a doers, doer of the word and not hearers only. After you develop a vision or a mission, you've sought God, God has given you a goal, you develop a team, and then it's time to get to work. Everybody shout work. Now, a lot of people, they want to shout, but they don't want to work. A lot of people want a prophetic word, but they don't want to work. 
I can't tell you the countless hours. I've had to put on work clothes, work around this church, build the church in Far Rockaway, challenge, preach the gospel, challenge people to support the vision, putting up tents and standing with great men of God like R.W. Shambach in 10 days, believing by faith for a quarter million dollars to come in for a soul winning crusade so that lives can be changed, bodies healed, young people set on fire for God. It takes hard work to see a vision from God come to pass. And this is what's lacking in a lot of people's life. They want God to speak and they're asking God for the impossible but they're not willing to do the difficult. Somebody shout vision. How many of you have a vision for your marriage? How many of you have a vision for your business? Somebody said, well, pastor, I'm getting married. When? You've been talking about it for years. Plan the wedding if you're getting married. How many of you believe in for a new home, new better place to live, a better job, a better career? Start looking every day. Get online. Submit your resume every way you can. And then we'll believe for the blessing and the favor of God to take your application from the bottom of that school you want to go to. God will take the application from the bottom and he'll put it on the top. That is the blessing and the favor of God. You need to understand God blesses those that cooperate with his plan. Somebody said, well, pastor, I need a job. Get off your couch. Turn off Jerry Springer. Put the Doritos in the cabinet and start looking for work. Understand, it's not time to watch one life to live. You only have one life to live on earth, and you need to make an impact with your life that God gives you. Stop murmuring and complaining. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, and start making things happen as you pursue God's purpose for your life. Someone said, well, pastor, I'm believing for my own home. Why would, you, why would God bless you with a brand new home when you live like a pig in the house you rent? You don't take care of other people's property. You think God's going to bless you with your own property? When you borrow a car, do you fill it up with gas or you give it back empty like my son does? <laughs> but AJ understands. He borrowed my truck. I got it back on a full tank. Do we value the things that God has used people to bless us with? Do we value our jobs that we have now? Do we value the level of business that we have acquired up to this point in our life? Because if we're not appreciative of what God has done in our lives up to this moment, we are not ready for what God is going to do in the next chapter, new level, and greater seasons of our lives. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Some of you need to go home today. Instead of laying on a couch for 10 hours, get out some mop, get some bleach, get a swiffer, and clean your pigsty. Pastor, I, I just really want a man. Put on some deodorant, get some perfume, brush that mug, and maybe people will be attracted to you. Well, I would never say that. That's because you don't, you don't deal with what I deal with. The moment you begin to prepare and pursue the vision, it reveals to God that you're serious about it. How many of you are serious about having the most blessed year of your life? Some people, you get in their car, you need a bobcat, you need a backhoe, you need a bulldozer. Open the car, almost drown in Poland spring bottles. Some of your car doesn't need a vacuum, it needs a match. Smile. See, we want God to do the impossible, but we're not willing to do the inconvenient. I don't like it when I give people things and they don't take, they don't take care of it. I don't like it when I lend tools to people and they come back full of rust. 
Plus, they left them out in the rain. People don't understand value. Like some sitting here today, you have no, you have no value for the word of God. Because it's not the des utmost desire of your heart. But there are some of us in here, we are going to pursue God's plan, and we are going to experience God's best this year in our lives. Somebody lift your hands, put a smile on your face, and shout, this is good preaching. When you're prepared, you always attract opportunity. People that have vision, they have these three things in common. I'm almost done. They see the past as their teacher. Number two, they view the present as an opportunity. And they face their future fearless. Some of you need to thank God for the things you went through. The things and the storms you survived have made you the person you are today. Come on, somebody. You better thank God God didn't give you what you asked for the first time you asked him for it. Because some of you wouldn't be serving him today. And I'm going to say many times God will delay what you want him to do for you. Because God wants to accomplish something deep on the inside of you. Everybody shout, God give me vision. Joel said, men shall dream dreams. And see visions. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, put it on the screen, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God. Say, my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. If I can get some of you just to get that in your spirit and live it, your life is not your own. You've been bought with a price, so honor God. Your life is not your own. Your talents are not your own. Your gifts are not your own. Your anointings are not for you only, for the benefit and blessing of somebody else. Therefore, honor God. God does not take you backward. God wants to take you forward and higher. He takes us from one level of faith to another level of faith. It always gets better. Shout, it always gets better. He takes us from one dimension of glory ha, 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 to another dimension of glory. Can you say amen? That's why I started out with saying today, don't dwell on the past. Be alert. Be present. God is about to do something brand new. How many of you ready for God to do something brand new for you? How many of you ready for God to do something brand new in you? I lost you right there. See, everybody wants to go up, but very few want to grow up. Do you know at Calvary, you lost your right to take your talents and opportunities and experience, do whatever you want to do with it? Why would you even want to do what you want to do? Go your own way. Why would you want to do that? What could possibly be more fulfilling then fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And what could be more tragic than missing it? Nothing is more fulfilling and rewarding than fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Nothing is more tragic than missing God's purpose and plan for your life. Well, I just come to church. That don't mean you have vision. I'm involved in ministry. That doesn't mean you have vision. I'm so grateful for everyone that's here. Me and my wife are so appreciative for all of your sacrifice and all of your support. But I want you to have a vision not just for this church, but a vision personally in your own life. I want to see you excel this year. I want to see you achieve greatness in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? I declare that this is going to be a history-making year for you. I declare this is going to be the year that the greatest chapter of your life shall be written. This is going to be a year that dreams are coming true and prophecies are coming to pass and miracles are going to manifest. But I can see it and I can believe it, but if you don't believe it and agree, it won't happen. Some of us are trying to fill holes in our hearts. Trying to fill holes in your hearts with things. The hole you're trying to fill has an eternal dimension only Christ can fill. That's why you must pray, Lord, show me your vision for my life. 
My father used to talk to me many times frustrated. How do they do not have a vision for their life, Kevin? I really don't know. How you could be around all of this anointing and the moving of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God preached and teached and the demonstration of God's power and have no vision for your life. I would never work a job that I couldn't stand. When you enjoy what you do, it's no longer work. I'm so thankful for those that work in the medical field that have a heart for people. But just because you're in the medical field doesn't mean you have a heart for people. But thank God for those that do. Let's give God praise for those that serve our community and take care of the sick and the infirm. <laughs> Lift your hands say, Lord, show me your vision for my life. Without vision, good things will keep you from achieving great things. People without a clear vision are easily distracted. They quit what they start. How many of you know people like this? They quit what they start. Maybe you're that person. Could it be? That you're a starter but not a good finisher? You plan, but you never put action to the plan. Start the diet. You quit it. You made the New Year's resolution, I'm going to go to the gym every day. You went for four days, and you've been paying for it ever since. <laughs> Resolutions don't work. But a vision from God will always work. What God spoke to your heart will always come to pass. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. <laughs> Many people that quit what they start, they have no spiritual, relational, financial, or moral compass. People without vision. Tragically, they make decisions that rob them of their dreams. When you have a vision, you have these four things. You have passion. You have motivation. You have direction. And you have purpose. Let me say it again. When you have a vision for your life, passion, motivation, direction, and purpose, these are the things you possess. Doesn't mean you're always going to feel like it, but you pursue with passion every day. There's a motivation when you have a vision from God. There's direction for your life. There's a purpose that you're living for that is a higher purpose than yourself. Let me say that right now. If you're only living just for God to bless you and believing for God to increase your vision just so that you could acquire more things, I'm not preaching to you today. I'm preaching to those that have a vision that is greater than themselves. God doesn't want to just give you a vision so that you can be blessed. He said to Abraham, come outside the tent. Come on down to the seashore. As numerous as the grain of the sand is, that's how many your descendants are going to be. People that needed to hear this message aren't even here today. You live safe your whole life. Safe living generally produces regrets later on. Proverbs 3 and 6 says, acknowledge him. Acknowledge the Lord. And he shall direct your paths. Say it with me. If I honor God, he shall direct my path. Say it again. If I honor God, he shall direct my path. I love what the psalmist said. I'm almost through. He said, I will instruct you, Psalm 32, 8, in the way you should go. So watch this. If God will instruct me and give me clear, precise, divine direction and guidance for my life, and I'm living a life without direction, could it be that I am not acquiring the wisdom and the direction of God for my life? Could it be? If we're always wandering in the same, dealing with the same issues, wandering aimlessly. I love what it says in Deuteronomy. He says, you've circled this mountain long enough. God wants to break the sheer reoccurring cycles and patterns in the people of this church. 
God is raising up wealthy people in this room. This is the year that have a vision to be a blessing to many people. I wish you'd shout right now. What God has put in your heart is going to manifest in your hand. This is going to be a year that God is going to reward the faithful. Vision brings your world into focus. It brings order and purpose out of your chaos. God is the giver of vision. Say that with me. God is the giver of vision. One more time. Say God is the vision. God is the vision giver. Say God is the vision giver. So ask him. Ask him. Ask him for vision. Keep your mind on your vision. Keep your mind on your vision. You will never go further than your vision. Proverbs 29 says, where there's no vision, the people perish. Where there's no vision, the what? How many of you believe the word of God is not a fairy tale? So where there's no vision, what happens? How many of you want to perish? How many of you want to perish? Nobody. Of course not. How many of you want to flourish? Say, I'm not going to perish. I'm going to flourish this year. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. It says where there is no vision, the people perish. It doesn't say where there's no money. It doesn't say where there's no opportunity. It doesn't say where there is no talent. What limits us is a lack of vision. People of vision are not offended when they're challenged by their pastor. People that are in compromise are always offended when they're challenged, always. People that have a heart for the things of this world, but not a desire to see the kingdom of God advance. You challenge those people, you'll find out real quick how dedicated they are to the vision. The people saw the walls around Jericho and said, we can't do this. But Joshua had God's revelation and God's vision. He said, yes, God can. You may be limited, but you serve a God that is unlimited. It may not be possible with you, but with God, all things are possible. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. The people looked at Goliath and they said, we can't do this. The giant... Goliath is too big, but David had God's vision and said, yes, God can, because Goliath is too big to miss. I'm telling you, there's some big opportunities that are coming to people this year. There are some big blessings that are coming to people this year. Maybe I'm preaching to somebody over there. Maybe I'm preaching to somebody way out there in TV land. But I'm telling you, there are opportunities that are going to be afforded to you this year that are going to be too big. You are not going to miss this season. You are not going to miss the next level that God has for you. And let me help you today. If you're covering sin, the Bible says you'll never prosper. Ten spies saw the giants in Canaan. Said, we can't do this. But I love what Joshua and Caleb did. They said, shut up. You got to silence some people. You got to tell some people, That's, that may be, may be what you believe, but it's not what I believe. They may tell you my mother had cancer and my father had that. Yeah, but the curse was broken at the cross of Calvary. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I don't know what level of IQ you have, how much education you have, how talented you are. That means nothing. God can bless you and prosper you in spite of your inability. Somebody shout God can do anything. Stop saying you can't and say, I can do all things. Through Christ, I feel the Holy Spirit all over me right now. I can do this. I can prosper. I will prevail in the midst of my adversaries. And I know the Lord has favored me because he has not allowed the enemy to triumph over me. You want the word? I'm going to keep preaching. If you don't, you can go home. It's all right. Hungry people are hungry about the word of God. 
How many of you excited about Jesus? Then you need to shout like you're excited about this message. You cannot accomplish vision without a vessel. It's impossible for a vision to become a reality or come to fruition without a vessel. How many of you are available vessels for the vision? Well, there is no vision without a vessel. Vision always needs a vessel to be fulfilled. Vision must be visible. That's why the Bible says write it down. I wrote it down yesterday. I wrote down some things we're believing to achieve this year. A lot of people, they say they're with you with their words, but their heart is far from the vision. The Bible says where your treasure is, your heart is. Are you receiving another offering? Absolutely. For vision. For vision. People say, well, I don't like going to that church. They, all they do is talk about money, and that's all you talk about. You go to Walmart today, Super Walmart. We were in the new Super Walmart not too long ago. We had all the items on the conveyor belt. They said, you owe $280. I didn't say all you want is my money. I was focused on getting home and eating some Cheetos. <laughs> what you value, you invest in. I challenge everybody. I challenge everybody that works in ministry, whatever level of ministry you're in, whatever you do for God, do it with all of your heart. That's why the Bible says love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength. Whatever God has called you to do, do it with all of your might. Somebody said, Pastor, how do you know I'm not excited? Because you're silent all the time. Well, that's just my temperament. Not if you won the lottery. You'd be running naked down 112. <laughs> Forget to get dressed. Run right out of your house. I got the winning number. We come to church. We sit there as dead as 4 o'clock in the morning. The pastor arrives at 7 and prays hours for our soul. We come to church. The Spirit of God begins to move. Pastor Anthony gets up and teaches us how to be blessed on another level. And we're looking at our watch. When is pastor going to finish? Not anytime soon. Keith, you okay? I saw piles of diapers by the organ. Are you all right? You all right? You're going to need my old tent to wrap it around. Where there is no vision, the people perish. God will always release provision to those that have a heart to finance vision. If you can do it without God, your vision, your dream, if you can accomplish it without God, that is not a vision, that's a project. If you can do it without God, that is not a vision, that's just a project. Vision without action is useless. challenge people over the years. I want to help you. I want you to come be a part of our staff. I don't always do it for the ministry. I do it because I want to be a blessing to help somebody. So people would rather work 20 jobs than be a part of a world changing vision because they themselves have no vision. What are they going to pay? Wrong question. When you come to church when you walk to, through the doors of this church and God has sent you here, you should never say first what's in that church for me. You should say what are gifts, what gifts are in me for the church. What a talent, what anointing do I have upon my life that I can be a benefit and a blessing in somebody else's life. Until you get a vision, you can work 80 hours a week and you will not prosper. God is not limited by resources. 
God is not limited by your education. God is not limited by your background. God is not limited by your nationality. The only thing that God is limited by is your vision and your faith. This word will change your life if you really hear it. No, if you really hear it. We still live? Watch the replay. Go home and watch it again tonight. Instead of going home and watching Jerry Springer, you are not the father. Get the word in your heart. Get the word in your mind. Get the word in your spirit. Get the word. If I hide thy word in your heart, I shall not sin against the Lord. You better thank God I didn't say what I was about to say. The Bible says a vision doesn't lie. Habakkuk said a vision doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, put it on the screen. Wait, it's on the way. I wish somebody would jump up and celebrate the greatest season, chapters, and seasons and period of your life. It is on the way. The worst is over, and the best is yet to come. God has delivered you in the past. God will deliver you in the present. God will deliver you in the future. He healed you before. He'll heal you again. Why aren't you shouting, I visited you in ICU? Why aren't you shouting? God, Andrea, Rosemary, God has sent people, Carissa, to this church today because I prayed to finance the vision. Lift your hands. Say, this is my year of double vision. I'm not talking about blurred vision in the natural. I'm not talking about obscurity of sight. I'm talking about double the harvest, double the vision, double the miracles, double the increase. I'm going to declare what I declared two weeks ago. You got faith, lift your hands. I declare seven times. I declare 100 fold. And I declare for somebody that's hearing me right now, get ready. There's going to be an explosion in your spirit. Get ready. 1,000 times this week. Somebody's getting a miracle by tomorrow. Somebody's coming off a ventilator tomorrow. Somebody's coming out of ICU tomorrow. I feel the power of God. What do you feel? What are you sensing? God is not releasing provision in the hour of time we're in to selfish people. The Bible says the obedient will prosper. Everything you set your hand to will succeed. Stop hanging around with people that tell you it can't be done. Stop hanging around with people that are always giving you their little word of discouragement. I'm telling you, some of you, the reason why you're always discouraged, you have the wrong people around you. I don't need people telling me how it can't be done. I need people to rally around me on my team and say anything can be done. I don't need five people give me their four, five points of negativity. I want people that empower my faith. I want people that stir my spirit to expect even greater things. Lift your hands. I declare God is going to exceed your expectation. I declare to you right now, for those of you that have vision, for those of you that are writing down this week, for those of you that are get people around you and build the right team, God said, get ready. I'm going to exceed even your dream. For I'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever dare ask, think, or imagine by my power that works Thomas God always gives provision for vision
when you honor God with your provision, he'll take you to another dimension. I live this, I don't just talk it. A lot of talkers, very few walkers. You could jump up and down the rest of your life, name it, claim it, blab it, try to grab it, and never have anything. To you discipline yourself, focus your faith, eliminate things in your life that are unnecessary, that are hindering your growth and your development. Someone said, well, pastor, I got too many bills to give to God. Well, your priorities are all screwed up. Before you sit down to pay your rent, before me and my wife sit down to pay our mortgage, before we pay our lease on our car or any other bills we have, God gets his first. I lost half the church right there. Take a deep breath. Smile. Are you glad you're alive? Inhale. Now exhale and give God praise. He's blessed you with another week. Some people died. They didn't make it through another week. But God has saved you because he has a purpose and a plan for you. And God's dream is about to manifest in your life. Where there's no vision. A vision doesn't lie. I'm going to read it again. If it seems slow in coming. Wait, it's on the way. As long as the people of God rallied around Moses, the people of God prevailed in battle. If God sent you to this church, get involved. People always have a comment. You've done nothing. Criticize everything. I don't like the paint color. You're living in a motel. You're criticizing a church. Nothing wrong with living in a motel, but God has greater for you. God don't want you to settle for government assistance. God wants you to assist people that have a need in their life. I'm talking about the next level. See, religious spirits, I felt it right there. Religious spirits said, oh, no, we're always going to have the poor among us. No, God wants to prosper people. If we are going to finance mission, if we're going to finance vision, if we're going to take the gospel around the world, somebody's got to be wealthy. <laughs> Stop enabling people that have no faith. The Bible says we're blessed. That means we're empowered to prosper. Say, I'm empowered to prosper. How many of you had a word of prosperity concerning vision and vision? Let me see your hand. Vision and dreams. Let me see your hand. Everybody shout, I'm empowered to prosper. Shout, I'm empowered to prosper. A lot of people say a lot of things. I told a young man in this church last week, I said, not only was I touched by what you did for the church, but I said God was moved by what you did by faith. Young man sowed a $10,000 seed last week. I know people in this room have never given $20 to God. They've never given $1,000 to God. And you think you're called to preach? It takes sacrifice. It's not about the amount. It's about the obedience. Somebody said, well, when, when is God going to provide for my needs? See, it's always about you. It's never about anybody else. See, what I'm going to ask people to do today has nothing to do with me and my wife. Only this part it does. You're enabling us to do more for the kingdom of God, helping and reaching more souls. I'm going to tell you what I told you last Sunday. If you want the truth, this is the church for you. If you want somebody to lie to you, I can't help you. Why do we get so mad when preachers love us enough? Teachers of the word of God love us enough to confront us. Why are we so mad when people, people, people tell us the truth, but we should, we're never mad when somebody's always lying our face? Liars in the church. The Bible says all liars shall have their place in the lake of fire. What we prioritize, we pursue. I got people that drive all the way from the city. Liz, stand up with your ripped jeans self. 
Girl's a wealthy girl wearing holes in her pants. I'm speaking by faith over her life. She's going to be very wealthy. She's going to be one of the greatest supporters of the vision of this church. Why aren't you clapping? Oh, my God. Why, see, everybody else gets the word. That's why you never get a word, because you don't celebrate somebody else's season. Drives all the way from the city. Be seated. Her boyfriend, always three hours late. He's in the back operating the media. All the way from Brooklyn. All the way from Brooklyn every week. People drove from Connecticut to be here last Thursday night. Thursday night, people drove from Pennsylvania to be in church Thursday night. Are you listening to me? Upstate New York, people drove in Thursday night. This Thursday night's going to be incredible. When you have a desire, you'll be in the house. When you're on fire, you'll be in the house. God's raising up people that can be trusted. If I can't trust you, I can't use you in the kingdom. This is what we're believing for this year. Get the slides ready. We're believing that this will be the greatest year. The greatest harvest of souls. Let me say it again. This will be the year that we will see the greatest harvest of souls come into the kingdom of God locally and globally. We will make an impact for eternity. Everybody shout souls. Souls and more souls. Give the Lord praise. God's going to save your children, your loved ones, your sister, your brother, those that are away from God. Number two, this is our vision. We're going to increase involvement in community, in community outreach and missions. Increase involvement in the community, outreach and missions. Number three, we're going to acquire a church bus this year. I said we're going to acquire a church bus this year so that we can transport people to and from church. Many of you that are new to the ministry, we have a 200-acre retreat upstate New York that we take a lot of the young people. And we just added another four bedrooms on that retreat, and we're believing that this year God will bless us and enable us to complete the expansion at the Rock Retreat. So we could take more young people and be a blessing in their life. Can you say amen? amen? This is the year we're raising up. The fifth thing that the Lord placed upon me and my wife's heart. We're raising up this year the next generation of ministry. How many of you want to leave a legacy? Somebody said to me the other day, I'm going I'm to carry on the legacy. Not without God, you're not. Not excluding God from your life, you're not. Everybody shout, the next generation is rising up. Say it together. The next generation is rising up. A vision that God started with my father and began to grow in me and my wife. We want to begin this year somehow, some way, by faith. To begin the stages, the first stage and phase of the youth center for Long Island. The Long Island Community Center or the Long Island Family Center. Can somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're believing this year to produce over the next year or so, however long it takes, but we want to begin to produce our own music projects here at the church. I don't think you heard what I said. We play a lot of other ministries' music, and that's beautiful, but why not have our own music? Why don't we create our own song and sound? Are you listening to me? This year we're starting, I think, next month. We're launching Empowered Kids Service. Now, let me tell you what that is. They're going to have their own service, their own worship back there, their own preaching back there, get the little kids to get up and preach and pray. So that way when they transition into the main sanctuary, they're ready to do the work of God. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Parents, get your kids involved. Get your kids in Empowered Kids. Get them signed up. Every Sunday, get them here early. Amen. Now, we have some things we're believing to do. Also, the ninth thing that we wrote down and believing and we've been praying for is that the Lord is going to open new doors for new networks for Empower Today. Everybody say new doors to open, new networks to open for Empower Today. So these are just some of the things. Now, these are the things we need to do very quickly.
things that are needed here at the church. And I'm going to finish. I'm sorry it's been a little long today. No, I'm not sorry. I take that back. Church improvements needed. Roofs need to be repaired. HVAC needs more work. Sound system is going to be upgraded. We want to have the best of the best here at this church. How many believe God's house should have the absolute best in every area? Let me see your hand. A couple of weeks ago, we had all the singers get in-ear molds, monitors. See the speaker in my ear? This is doing with these things that a 6,000 watts normally do. So I'm hearing myself in my ear. This is my monitor. So when I speak, I don't need these speakers. It's directly into my ear. That system alone is almost $20,000. 15 to 20 grand just for those monitors. Never mind all the other speakers. We're either going to sell all this stuff or we're going to put it aside for all the outdoor meetings and tent revivals that we're going to be doing. I said all the tent revivals we're going to be doing. This summer we're putting up a tent. I said this summer we're putting up a tent. My tent was hit by a storm, a hurricane, about a year ago, but the devil's stupid. We're about to double the size. How many of you want to help us make an impact on this earth that will echo on way after you're gone throughout eternity? Can you say amen? So these things are over $200,000, just a few things I've mentioned. So God has got to prosper people. You can't give what you don't have. I said you can't give what you don't have. If anybody ever tells you it doesn't cost anything to reach people, to reach souls, to operate a ministry, they've never been involved in any type of a legitimate ministry. You cannot do what we do without finances. Everybody say vision. How many of you could see where we're going? Then support what we're doing. I prayed today and I prayed yesterday and I prayed starting on Friday night that the Lord would speak to people today that would support the vision. We have so much to do, so little time to do it. How many of you believe the return of Christ is imminent? I don't know how much time we have, but I know we don't have long. And what we do for God, we've got to do it quickly. Can you say amen? amen? How many of you want this to be the most prosperous year you've ever had? Do it God's way. Do it God's way. When the vision is caught, you'll always support. People will not invest in something they don't see. People will not invest in something that has not been written down. You've seen it today, some of the things. This is the church, the place where souls are one, Jesus is Lord. The place where souls are one, mercy is extended, and miracles happen. How many have ever received a miracle here? Can I see your hand? Anybody ever receive some form of a miracle in this church? Then become a miracle for somebody else. Ask God to make you a miracle, to bless you beyond measure, so that you can bless other people for God's glory for eternity. I'm not asking people to give a little today. You can't accomplish what I'm talking about by giving a little. I need people today that will stand with me. As Aaron and her held up the arms of Moses, the Bible says there was victory. Can you say amen? I'm going to ask everybody that will give on some level of sacrifice. Give me those envelopes, my friend. Come and stand right across this front right now. I'm not asking you to text to give right now. I'm asking you to come and stand with me. I need to know who's standing with us. I need to know who's standing with us today. We have so much to do, so much to do. Everything I've shared with you is 1,000% legitimate. We don't make up stories to get money from people. I don't believe God will bless a ministry like that. I don't believe God will prosper a church like that or a pastor like that. That challenges people to give and they themselves don't sacrifice. Business people getting ready for that meeting March the 12th. On Saturday at 11 a.m., we're going to be having a business meeting, kingdom business. Everybody say kingdom business. You want to start a business or you'd like to hear about an opportunity for business, we're opening it up to everyone as long as you're a tither. I will not enable people to disobey God by robbing him, by giving them other means of finances when they're not going to do what's right. But if you are a tither and a giver, it's open to you. I'm asking everybody else in this room, if you do not hear my heart today, there is something seriously wrong with you. I need you to stand with us today as we do more for God. 
And I'm going to share one more thing with you before we go. I'm going to ask you to take this envelope, and I'm going to ask you to sacrifice. Sacrifice. That means it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. Take this envelope from my hand. I love you. I thank God for every one of you. When I say I pray for you every day, me and my wife pray for you every single day. See, me and my wife, we're doing this. Those that count the offering, they know me and my wife are givers. They know we support the work of God. We don't tell people to do what we don't do. I believe that's a phony. I don't like phonies. I don't like people that take envelopes and then go back to the chair and put it in the pocket and don't give. That's a phony. Don't be a phony. Don't be fake. Let's do something for God today. God bless you, my friend. How many of you received this word today? Those online, you received this word. Give then. Support. Invest if you're blessed. If you're blessed, then make an investment. Thank you so much. Those online, God bless you. We love you. Thank God for you. Amen. Have a great day online. We love you. Don't forget Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night, 7.30, I'll be in the studio and Empowered Live. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I pray you were blessed by today's message. If you're ever in the Long Island area, Olga and I would love to meet you. I promise you this. You come to our church, you'll come as a friend, but you'll leave as family. If you have any prayer requests, I would love to agree with you. You can go to our website, www.jilc.org. You could also send us an email to prayer at jilc.org. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Parents, there's something for your kids every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Empowered Kids. I can't explain what God's doing. You've got to come on out and experience it. We'll see you next time.